Welcome back, everyone. This is your host, Connor Fermender, co-founder and CEO of Fielder. We appreciate you joining us on this fine morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever you happen to be listening to us. We're super excited for today's episode, episode 14, titled Getting Back into the Job Market with a very special guest right here in Southwest Florida. Um, but before we get into that, before we get into the episode, uh, we just want to go over a couple housekeeping items. Number one, just wanted, wanted to wish everyone uh, a, now it's over, but happy 4th of July. We hope you enjoyed your 4th of July weekend. Uh, probably a much needed break mid-year amongst everything going on. So we hope everyone was safe, healthy, and, and enjoyed the holiday. Um, just a quick reminder, uh, I was, uh, I'm very, very blessed, very grateful to have published my book a couple weeks ago on July 1st. So if everyone wants to go get a copy, uh, it's, at, it's on Amazon, amazon.com. Just go ahead and type in Connor Fermender or uh, the ever-evolving art of balance. I'll go ahead and I'll drop the uh, the title and the, um, the the spelling of the name and the spelling of the title, you know, right below in the subtitle or right in the bottom of this video. Um, other than the book reminder, just want to give you another reminder uh, that Lee County's Fielder Portal, the exclusive high school portal, uh, is out now, uh, out in the community. Uh, we're working with Kelly Thawley in the Career and Tech Education Department over at the school district to start getting employers and businesses signed up on their exclusive portal. So when August 10th rolls around, in about a little over a month and a half, uh, the district is going to start dispersing it out to all the students, all the high school students in the community. And so again, it's a good opportunity now to start getting your account as an employer signed up, start creating that account and get any job listings all the way from an internship, project base, any volunteer opportunities even. Get those listed now. And so when August rolls around, you'll be of the first companies and first employers that have your, your, uh, your listings visible to all the students. And last but not least, uh, just wanted to give another reminder, final reminder, uh, that we're nearing the end of season one for our podcast. So again, this is episode 14. We have episode 15 coming out in a week, and then we're going to be doing our season finale with a special guest from Florida Southwestern College, actually. Um, but again, this is just the end of season one. We're going to keep on working on Fielder Academy. Phase two is going to be coming by uh, via blog. Um, it's going to be written by myself and our co-founders, uh, possibly bringing in a content creative team. Um, but it's obviously going to be just an extension uh, to Fielder Academy, very much educational blogs, and uh, it's going to be a good time. So stay tuned for all that, the whole, all the details on the absolute end of season one. And then, of course, when we roll out our first blog, we'll make sure we keep everyone informed. But without further ado now, we want to get, you know, dive into to introducing our guests. We're super excited to have Jeanette Castrejon on today's episode. Jeanette is originally from Panama and has been living in Southwest Florida since 1989. After graduating from Cypress Lake High School, Jeanette was recruited into the U.S. Army and stationed in Fort Bragg, North Carolina for four years. Upon her honorable dis discharge from the U.S. Army as an accounting specialist, Jeanette returned to Florida to raise her family and continue her career with the financial industry. She worked for various companies like SunTrust Bank, WCI Communities, and Telemundo. She recently received her bachelor's degree in communication with a concentration in public relations from Florida Gulf Coast University, shout out Eagles, and is currently working for CareerStar Southwest Florida as the community manager. Giving back to her community is also very close to Jeanette's heart as she volunteered at the Southwest Florida Hispanic Chamber from 2009 to 2010 as the chair of the board and is currently on the media advisory committee for WGCU, a member of FPRA and board member of the News Press Editorial Board. Jeanette is a proud mother of a young lady named Victoria and a rescue cat named Midnight. Jeanette, it's an absolute pleasure to have you on today's episode. We're super excited to get into it. Thank you so much, Connor. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Absolutely, absolutely. So, you know, every, with everything going on, the episode title, Getting Back into the Job Market, you know, and I did mention we're nearing the end of season one. So we want to really start delivering content, messages, educational tips and tricks to our younger audience so that when this season kind of does end, we leave our audience with an impactful course of action that they can take to getting back into the job market. Again, hence the name of this title, obviously. Um, so I wanted to, first, I wanted to start just hearing more about your involvement at CareerSource, and then we'll jump into some trends, but go ahead and just, you know, share some more details for our audience on your involvement at CareerSource and exactly what the community manager does. Okay, uh, I'm the communications manager. Communications uh, manager, I'm so yeah, sorry, communications okay. manager. <laughs> I just wanted to clarify that. Uh, Career Source Southwest Florida is part of a 24 workforce boards across the state of Florida. So our organization, Career Source Southwest Florida, we cover the five county area. And what we do is that we connect job seekers with employers. We are the bridge between the two. 
We offer our services at no cost. We are a state-funded organization. So it is critical for us more than ever to be there for you if you're looking for a job, career, next opportunity, or if you want to go back to school, we can help with that too. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And so I know, I know you've been there for, remind me of how many years, only a couple years now, right? It's been five years this five month, year, actually. Five years this month. Well, congratulations on the five-month anniversary. That's very exciting. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> did, you, did you start as a communications manager, or did you start as a different role and then move into communications manager? You know, like any opportunity with an organization or a new field industry, I started at the low end. Uh, I, I was actually a business account executive with the business services department. And then within 10 months, uh, the communications division uh, they were looking for a social media coordinator and it just caught my eye. That was about four years ago. So I went for it and I found it to be extremely interesting. So uh, when I joined the department, you know, I was primarily in charge of social media and website. Uh, then I decided to go back to school, get my bachelor's. I finished uh, FGCU with a bachelor's degree in communication and concentration in public relations. And that it, yeah, I finally knew what I wanted to be when I grew up, you know, <laughs> <laughs> which grew is up a in it. Yeah, yeah. manager. Yeah, it's, a, awesome. it's a wonderful job because my primary uh, responsibility and objective is to truly inform the community of what we do. Uh, an organization like ours being nonprofit, we don't have advertising dollars. So it is extremely important for someone like myself to get involved in the community, to do this awesome podcast like with you, Connor, today. And, um, you know, talk to the media and get everybody informed of what we can do because we don't charge and we are here to help to truly give you a hand for that next job or next career. Absolutely. No, all, all great stuff. And I'm sure given career source does such a phenomenal job of kind of, I don't want maybe housing is not the right word, but bringing in possible recruits, possible talent and, and guiding them along the process, kind of doing that, that, that awesome favor of, you know, holding their hand into that next position, into that transition, into their career. So what I'm getting at is, is with really, you know, the limited uh, physical, you know, um, interaction with, with being able to limit, you know, capacities. And I'm sure, especially a couple of weeks ago when everything was really shut down, what kind of changes, what kind of repositioning did CareerSource have to do to really stay, I guess, on top of, you know, all the different clients and all the different candidates that you work with, knowing you kind of lost that interaction, that physical interaction, like all of everyone. Yes. Uh, wow. This new norm as we call new it norm, now right. has been quite a challenge for everyone really whether it's in your yeah. work life professional life or personal life so career source southwest florida when we decided to close the doors for the safety of our clients and staff uh we regroup and continue to provide services virtually for our clients so we were having virtual meetings with them we were calling people on the phone and what we do i mean we could also do it virtually not necessarily always in person but we can help you like uh, structure your resume so mm -hmm. you land that interview, how to properly interview, practice with you, how to negotiate your salary, anything related to landing that job or that career you really want, we're here to help. So we went virtual uh, for uh, until June 1st when we decided to reopen. So before we reopened, we put a place for safety and health as priority. So we immediately, you know, we have signs for social distancing, uh, we take appointments virtually through our website. So we give everyone about an hour, an hour and a half to use their computers. If they don't have a computer at home that they need to either do a job search or even unemployment and they need to apply for their unemployment benefits, they can use our computers. We disinfect between every appointment for about 30 minutes. We ask for masks and we also have an interviewer in front of the reception area asking health questions uh, just to make sure that everyone's safe. Very much prepared. Awesome. Now, good for you all. Like, take take an initiative to get open, but then obviously take the precautions that you you stay open, but you know, for 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 the right reasons and staying clean. It's awesome. So, what I'm, I, I'm sure trends are changing every nowadays. Everything's up and down. What used to charts that used to be you know sky higher now are now far below into the red and into the negative. But I'm just curious. And, and, and honestly, you know, especially since you're working on that social media as, as a coordinator, this probably might even give you some insight to the pre-COVID, but now how things have changed. So my question is, what sort of trends have you been recognizing in the job market, in the labor market, in, in let's say like the recent six months and where things are heading for the rest of 2020? What kind of trends have you been seeing? Well, it has been quite an eye opener, Connor, because 
everything has changed. I mean, we went from the lowest unemployment in over a decade uh, in late February, uh, running into March to all of a sudden, you know, double digits into like 14%. So the trends that we have seen uh, in Southwest Florida, again, this is our backyard and uh, that's what we specialize in, uh, that leisure and hospitality was tremendously affected by COVID-19 because of, you know, the mandate to close non-essential jobs and individuals, you know, finding themselves, you know, uh, being let go or furloughed from their positions. Uh, closing down the bars, uh, the, the reduction of restaurants going down to 50% capacity, uh, any close contact with clients like in retail was greatly affected. Um, we also saw that the medical industry, and I think you guys, if you follow uh, even social media, Facebook, Lee Health, for example, uh, you know, they are in a great need right now to, uh, they're asking for ICU uh, registered nurses, specialists uh, to, to, you know, to come and work for them because the, there has been a great medical need for staff. But interestingly enough, in the last couple of months, there was a reduction of patients showing up to the doctor offices. It really affected their bottom line because people just didn't want to be exposed. Plus the fact that the elective surgeries were canceled uh, or postponed. So that really hurt the medical industry as well, the the health industry within our our region. Um, So, but what was really great to know, uh, construction stayed very strong and stable through the last few months which is something very different than the last recession we had. I don't know if you guys are, you know, if you're young enough to remember that. <laughs> I've been here barely, so long. Yeah, yeah. Uh, back in 07, 08, if you remember even, you know, uh, when a lot of people lost their jobs, construction was the first one that was greatly affected by the recession. Not so in this new environment with COVID-19, it was completely different. They stay very strong and stable throughout. I could definitely know. I can definitely imagine that. And, and, and it's honestly crazy because you look at two of the largest industries here in Southwest Florida, the tourism got hit pretty effe- very, very heavily of the worst. But then, of course, the property development construction, very prominent here in Southwest Florida with the property development, but but being able to to get through this, you know, efficiently and effectively. So, yeah, what, what do, going into the rest of 2020 now, so we kind of touched on, you know, pre-COVID and then during COVID. Any good news going into the rest of the year? Are we, are we kind of looking at, I mean, I, I get a newsletter called, what is it called? Um, the Morning Brew. It's called The Morning Brew. I get a newsletter every morning and they're always going through different, uh, different uh, statistics and, and changes in our economy. And, and they've been touching on, you know, the un- unemployment rates. And I've been seeing, I don't want to pull out my phone right now because it would take me too long to find it. But I was, I've been seeing as though it looks like our, our job market, our unemployment numbers might be, might be starting to decrease. Jobs look like they're getting put back. I don't know if it was about a million jobs that were finally opened up again in the past week or so. Um, but it does, from what, I've, from what I've been reading, it does seem as though we're heading in, in the right direction. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. We have obviously a ways to go, but it's, it's, it's turning towards a light at the end of the tunnel. Can you give any, any, positive, any optimism for, for the rest of 2020, what it looks like? Absolutely, Connor. Uh, what's, I think it's extremely important that we find and we share optimistic and positive uh, outlooks because we are all being challenged in this environment. So uh, definitely when it comes to the workforce and what's happening in Southwest Florida, looking at those double digits go, going down for the unemployment, it's, it's a great new trend uh, that, is, that is showing up and we're excited about that. What that means is that the companies that have been able to reopen, even though they have reopened at a certain capacity, not a full 100% capacity. Because if you think about it, most businesses in Southwest Florida are small businesses and they were really affected by the closures. So when they decide to reopen, they had to reopen at a, most of them about about 50% capacity, capacity. So we see some of them calling back some of the employees and that has really affected the numbers for unemployment to go down, which is a very good positive trend. Uh, but also what this new norm has done for us, uh, all forced us per se, is going into a virtual uh, environment. 
that I don't think Southwest Florida was quite ready for. I know we were heading that way and I've attended a lot of seminars and workshops where companies and organizations were talking about it, uh, the virtual world. But guess what? COVID has forced us and now here we are. We're here. And um, the exciting part about that and what's very positive is the trend of jobs that are going to surface are already surfacing because of the new normal being virtual. Cybersecurity, for example, is going to be extremely needed and it's a, a new positive trend. Mm -hmm. Going virtual, we all now have to protect every computer, every program, access to what people can, you know, uh, you know, uh, reach out into your computer. So we need those people, those individuals and professionals in that field. Anyone in IT or technology, we keep advancing. Technology is fastly growing. So those are all the positive trends. But interestingly enough, I don't know if you are aware that there is a project in Hendry County, Clewiston. It's called the Air Glades International Airport. It's been going on since 2010. And what's really positive about this project, it is in, it's a private uh, airport that is about to be finished in 2022. It's going to bring hundreds not thousands of jobs to our Southwest Florida region. So what, what does they do? Have you heard about it at all, Connor? Very, very slightly, very slightly, yes. And I hadn't heard about it from a while, actually, for a while now. So from that perspective, logistics, uh, the industry in logistics is going to be a tremendous boom for our Southwest Florida area. And what the Air Glaze International Airport does, um, Clewiston or Hendry County is a great position to receive <clears throat> the plane cargo coming from Latin America of uh, perishable goods like fresh flowers, fresh seafood, vegetables. Miami uh, Airport cannot expand any more than it already has. So when the project was talked about in 2010, Clewiston was in a great position for it. So now instead of going to Miami, now they're going to come directly to Clewiston, Hendry County, into Air Glades. So these big planes are coming with fresh produce, and they need to be distributed right away. So um, semis are going to be filled with all these goods. And so when it comes to logistics, it's going to be a huge manpower needed to make the operation run. So when they come in the plane, they get put into the semis and then the semis are off on the road to distribute nationwide and vice versa. Uh, any goods that are not perishable that need to be sent to Latin America are going to go through Air Glades and back with the semis into Air Glades and back into uh, South America and Latin America. So that is going to be, and it already is, a game changer for Southwest Florida. That, and, you, and you just brought up a big point that I, and you, you're probably already aware of this, Scotland Logistics, I'm sure you're, you're aware of their locality, up their multiple offices. I'm sure you know they're building their, their new headquarters down here in Fort Myers. Um, that's right. That, that, that's the first thing I thought I'd come up with is, is now this new airport, I feel, is going to be a huge partner to, to Scotland, knowing Scotland is, is, is I mean, it's probably similar to the airport, creating hundreds, if not thousands of jobs. I'm sure Scotland is going to become one of the larger employers. You know, they're probably going to start ranking themselves up with the Gartners and Arthrexes down here when they build that headquarters next year. But I, I well, definitely, I mean, I'm saying that I know so much. I'm saying my roommate actually got, we got, we got my, my roommate, Kyle, a job through Fielder, believe it or not, um, um, at Scotland. The, yeah, it was one of our first full-time jobs we converted way back in like August, uh, end of last, last semester. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely see that the, uh, the logistics industry is going to boom here in South of Florida between that airport you just mentioned and between Scotland building their headquarters down here and probably mm -hmm. supplying a lot of those semis that are going to be doing the distribution. Um, so when we think of this, Connor, just to expand a little bit about yeah. the logistics into a huge project like this and adding, you know, uh, other partners like Scotland into the mix, these are going to be high skill, high wage jobs. So what's going to do to the economy is that within that area is going to be expanded or de more developed to provide employee housing. And we need that up in the in Glaze and Hendry. Absolutely. Uh, so we, you're going to have more restaurants go up. There's going to be more stores. I mean, there's going to be the, 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 what they're earning, high wage jobs, what they're earning is going to go back into our community. So it's going to mm -hmm. have a positive, a positive ripple effect into our economy that we greatly need right now. So it's something really much to yeah. look forward to. Absolutely. You bring, you bring up a great point in the impact it's going to have in those, those couple of counties, Henry and Glaze. Yeah, big time. Yeah. Anybody? And in addition, I don't know if you heard, I'm sorry, kind of no, for interrupting go, go, you, but please, go ahead. 
Amazon is also opening another distribution center in Naples. So you guys are aware they were a game changer when they came into Fort Myers, you know, part-time jobs, 15 an hour and benefits. I mean, that, that's incredible. Well, they are going to open another one in Naples. So that's another exciting news too. Do you know, do, I heard about that, but I haven't heard of a date. Do you have a, a, a date yet of when they, a ballpark dates of when, when they open that up yet or? No, we haven't got the dates okay. yet. So, but we are standing by yeah. <laughs> ready because yes. we also help employers like Amazon and any other company in Southwest Florida that needs our help to look for employees and talent. So we're going to be, uh, when they're ready uh, to do a virtual job hiring or career fair for them. So tune in, check our website always, because that's where we put all of our hiring events. And this is how we help our employers with hiring events, training fund dollars for their employees and so much more. So yeah, lot, more to lot, come. Yeah, a lot of opportunities on the horizon, which is a perfect dovetail into the next point I wanted to bring up is all the opportunities on the horizon or available right now and on the horizon for our emerging talent, for our, you know, our graduating high school students are going right into the labor force for, you know, different jobs in, in, you know, in the labor market that don't need the two-year, four degrees, or just the recent graduates who are leaving college this upcoming year and the following years. We already just listed like multiple opportunities right there between the airport popping up, between Scotland moving their headquarters down here. Arthrex just built, I'm pretty sure, their new headquarters like last year. Um, um, and then, and then, you know, cybersecurity you mentioned is a big one. I, I am, a, I am a huge advocate for, for sending any, any students or emerging talent who always reach out to me or reach out to Fielder or, or I just find, find myself in a conversation with on a campus. I'm always doing my best to guide them in the direction towards technology, whether that be a specific tech, t tech position or just something, a sales or marketing position at a tech company because there's just so much opportunity there, so much long-term. You know, nothing is guaranteed, nothing is promised, but we just saw clearly through this cold COVID storm, tech was able to ride the wave of it and was able to, I don't want to say coast through it, but almost kind of coast through it a lot of it. And, 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 and frankly, were the reliable resources for all the other companies who weren't being able to do so well. It was, it was tech who they were turning to. Um, you bring up, when you brought up cybersecurity, I just jotted down, look it down in my notes right now. Trust Stamp is a new company. I, I think they're out of California, and and they're they're raising they're raising one of their seed funding. I'm not one of their series rounds right now. I think it's their Series B round. But what Trust Stamp is working on is that that biometric um, uh, 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 accessibility. You know, the, the facial recognition, the touch ID, all of the different biometrics, and how much it's getting used, and and how I don't maybe saturated not, is not quite the word for it yet, but it's getting so used so frequently now that it's getting biometrics are getting easier now to breach. Um, so you already have companies like Trust Stamp who are now gearing and focusing their whole company, their whole model behind perfecting and 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 really building on the structure of biometric uh, um, um, uh, privacy. So that that's that's where the trends are heading is 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 the 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 priority of, of privacy and of data. Um, so yeah, I, I'm always, I'm always recommending different, different avenues towards the technology route for, for our younger audience. Um, but with that said, so to turn it over to you, Jeanette, what opportunities do you think are, are on the horizon or that the, the emerging talent and, and, and just to clarify what I mean by emerging talent, I mean, we can be talking anywhere from 18 to 22 to 23, 24, kind of that, that younger generation who is getting ready to prepare to get into that, uh, that labor, that labor market. What sort of opportunities do you recommend or advice do you recommend to, to that to our younger audience right now to start getting prepared and get involved? Well, I, I got to say to that generation, I definitely want to congratulate you. If you just finished and got your high school diploma or just graduating from college, uh, like I myself, and you mentioned that earlier, I just got mine. I mean, it took me a long time to figure it out, but I finally knew what I wanted to be when I grew up and I got my degree in, in communication. So congratulations. That's a great milestone. However, I do want to talk a little bit about this because there's always been a debate actually for years about the cost of education versus the return on investment uh, for your education. Um, the fact do, remains that individuals with a college degree will earn about 3.5 times more or about $34,000 more than a person with just a high school diploma. So um, there, that is still a solid uh, argument to go after that degree. You know, once you finish high school, you know, consider something that you want to go after. Now, 
mind you, not everyone, you know, wants to do the four-year college degree. I mean, it's for some and, and not for others. So organizations like ourselves, we partner with, you know, vocational uh, technical colleges, state colleges, and, and uh, various universities. So maybe you just want to get a uh, certification or go to a trade school. You know, we can help you with that as well, and that's something that you can consider. But um, What's going to be really interesting besides cybersecurity for opportunities, remote work is going to be more and more needed. As we have been pushed into this new norm because of COVID-19, uh, a lot of companies have had to find a way quickly to how can we keep our staff safe, uh, not come into the office and have them work remotely. And it's been a challenge, I got to tell you. Like I said earlier, uh, Southwest Florida was not ready for it, but we had to make the change very quickly. And I think we have succeeded in doing so. So remote, uh, remote work is going to be critical, um, you know, all the way from an example. If you guys ever go to Suncoast Credit Union, you don't actually get greeted by a physical person, a teller talking to you. You're actually talking to a kiosk, Right. And the question would be, okay, where's this person at ex exactly? Uh, definitely not Southwest Florida, but you are dealing with someone uh, in a remote virtual basis. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be, this is the trend that's gonna continue uh, for opportunities within that area. Remote work, uh, from, work from home, uh, you know, in a safe environment where you are at. So that's something to kind of look, look, um, look up to as well. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, that, that's probably, I think, the number one opportunity to start preparing for and to start seizing on as an emerging, as a, a considered emerging candidate is is the virtual working. Um, I mean, you look at, now we can even, we, we can even tie these together now, this, the, the technology and the working from home. Uh, um, oh my God, I'm just blanking on his name. <laughs> Jack Dorsey. Jack Dorsey, founder and CEO of, of Twitter and Square, announced, is at this point, it's months ago, here he's, he's announced it two months ago that employees for Twitter and Square, the high majority of employees, will never have to return back to an office ever again, forever. Thank Going you. forward, forever, Twitter, Square employees, I'm sure that he did mention there, there is that handful that do need to go back to an office. They need that the office space and resource for that, but high majority will never need to. And right behind them was, was, um, was Google and Facebook. I think they said, if it, it might not be a forever thing, but it's, it, it's at least until 2021 or 2022, they're like, look, we don't expect anyone to return to the office until you know, another year. Um, so absolutely start preparing to be a, an, an efficient, hardworking, virtual employee. Ab absolutely. There's going to be a lot of, lot of job opportunities, you know, and, and, and I love that you mentioned that Southwest Florida really wasn't quite prepared to be forced to go fully virtual. Yes, you're absolutely right. You know, everywhere from downtown Naples, where we have the Naples accelerator, you know, venture X, and then all the way up until Fort Myers, where we have the collaboratory, you know, the, at the community foundation with collaboratories doing. And everywhere in between that, there is a lot of emerging tech, a lot of emerging companies, startups everywhere from, you know, companies like Flight Docs who have been around for 12 years and have a big technology presence right here in Bonita. There, it's right on the horizon. It's right there. We have such a powerhouse of tech companies here that are just now emerging and growing and starting to work together and more and more are coming and, and congregating here to Southwest Florida. But I love that this did force us to, to, to make that leap for, for those industries who maybe were not so comfortable with moving all of their work and all of their employees and staff to virtual were forced to and now have seen the success that they can have out of it, have seen the impact and the efficiency that they can have and all of the overhead and the cost that they're saving from keeping everyone remote, right? And so, so there's a lot of good that has come out of being forced to do it. And I, and I love that Southwest Florida has managed this change. You know, I always like to say, Change is inevitable. It's just a matter of if you can manage the change or if the change is going to manage you. <laughs> and, and Southwest Florida managed the change. And we have, we have taken control of it and we have seized opportunity out of it. Initiatives have come out of it. Companies have rose out of it. Partnerships have risen out of it. And, it, and, and our economy is certainly going to survive. Um, as a startup founder, as an entrepreneur, and as just a Gen Zer, I thrive and love that ability to change and innovate and keep moving forward and what's next what's new how can we do this better what does the next five years look like what does the next 10 years look like how can we make things better now what kind of technology so like that that's what i love and, and i love that southwest florida has been able to provide those resources that foundation for it and i love that it's growing and we're a part of that growth that's been my favorite part about fielder and my favorite part about being here I want, I'm curious now, working with, South, with Career Source, given that as Fielder and Career Source, we do similar things. I've had, had plenty of conversations with Peggy 
Um, awesome, awesome, awesome staff. Love all, love everything you all do. I'm just curious, Jeanette, for you, what has been your favorite thing of working with Career Source and doing what you're doing for, for our community? Well, I got to tell you, anyone that works for this organization, we work here because of a passion that we have. And that passion lies in helping others uh, be self, self-sufficient and reach their goals and dreams. And we do that by helping them land their next job, next career, or sending them back to school. So to me, this is really not a job. And I remember about 15 years ago, um, the mentality for my generation, I'm an Xer, was that if you got a job and you were paying your bills, that was great and good enough. I didn't believe in passion. I didn't, I didn't, we didn't have that in our generation thought from our parents. But all of a sudden, you know, the, the environment of work, even in Southwest Florida, started to change because of the millennials and because of the Zers like yourself, uh, where now, you know, you want a purpose and you want a passion of some sort. It used to be very, um, you know, a term that I didn't understand. But when I joined Career Source Southwest Florida, I thought, oh my gosh, this is a fantastic way of helping people. We don't charge for services, so we help individuals, even those that are having major barriers in their life, uh, you know, really reach their goals and dreams. So that's my driver, that's my motivation working for this organization. And I mean, giving back, it's all about giving back and how can we help our community and since I've been here for about 30 years now, I mean, this is how old I am, and I'm kind of admitting to it now, oh, Connor. No. Uh, I've Youth been is here mindset, so you're long. young. <laughs> Thank you. I've been here so long that I have seen so much change in Southwest Florida. And to be able to say to you right now, I, I have a job, but it's really not a job. It's a passion that I come with every day here to make the difference in someone's life is really the driver for me and for most of the people that work for this organization. So here you have it. <laughs> do what you love and you'll always love what you do. It'll, it'll Absolutely. never feel like work. You do what you love and you're going to love what you do. It's what she just said sums up pretty much the reason I wake out of, I wake up out of bed every morning with a smile and I, and I, and I don't just crawl out of bed. Uh, I pop right up and I'm like, what do we got going on today? How, whose <laughs> life can we impact today? And what can we make it? So no, that's awesome. Passion, passion is my coffee. Never had a cup of coffee in my life, but passion is my coffee. Um, And I got to tell you, Connor, along that, um, when we sit down with someone, uh, we, 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 we sit with them and we really want to do a personalized, uh, job search process. So it's very important for us to know from you, the individual, which way you want to go with a career. You know, what are you passionate about? You know, find out really you know, type of industry, type of companies you want to go for, because we truly believe that if you have a passion you pursue into a career of your own, this is going to be a, a, a long-term opportunity for you. You know, of course, within fields that are going to be emerging as well, but finding your passion is extremely critical for your own happiness, for mm-hmm. your own fulfillment, as well as that company that you'll be working for. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's something that we really focus on when we, we actually sit down with you one-on-one. Yep. And, and, and as Steve Jobs said, just like with all good things in life, you'll know in your heart when you find that, that thing, that long-term That's thing. That's right. Go in your heart. And, st- and don't settle. Don't settle. Keep looking. Keep on looking. That's right. Um, but I love it. Well, cool. So we're nearing the end of our episode here, Jeanette. I want to just now give you the spotlight. Tell us what's going on in your world. It could be personal. It could be anything on the side. It could be career source. Just giving you the spotlight, anything that's going on that you want to tell our audience about and where they can possibly find you if they want to contact you. Well, we're very excited to tell everyone in Southwest Florida, we're going to launch our very first virtual career expo. And that's going to be July 30th from 10 to 1. Uh, please follow and uh, either on Facebook or uh, Facebook page or LinkedIn and also our website. Our website is careersourcesouthwestflorida.com, all spelled out together because that's where I'm going to create a landing page for this, uh, this awesome virtual career expo. And again, it's about connecting you with employers in the area. And I know we do similar things here, Connor. By no means, you know, this is not a competition. Hey, it's a collaborative. Thing, it's always been a collaborative, collaborative. relationship. It's exactly. always been collaborative. Yeah. We really believe in partnership. And that is 
that is a great way for us to get together and help our community. The focus exactly. here is how many people can we help land those jobs if they were for you know if they were let go, they're not working right now. You know, unemployment eventually is going to stop. Mm -hmm. You know, the stimulus is gonna stop, it's not gonna go forever. So we need to start thinking of the next step, the next phase. So coming up July 30th, that is an event, virtual event you want to be part of and actually connect with employers right here in Southwest Florida. So stay tuned with that. Definitely. We'll make sure we get all those links popped in there too in the video and in the audit podcast as well. So everybody can get quick access to that and don't have to go searching for it. Click the link and you'll find it right away. Thank you, Connor. Perfect. No, my pleasure. Awesome. Well, Jeanette, thank you so much for being a guest on our show. We hope you had fun, honestly. It was absolutely it was it was phenomenal. Thank you so much for this opportunity. <laughs> Absolutely. No, it's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. Everyone, thank you all for tuning in to episode 14. It was a lot of fun having Jeanette on. Um, we hope everyone just continues to stay healthy. You know, just looking at our high keep keeping items, just a reminder, um, go ahead and check out the book on Amazon. Go ahead and check out Lee County's portal. Uh, it's leeschools.fielder.app. Again, leeschools.fielder.app. You can go ahead and check out their exclusive Fielder portal. Um, but other than that, you know, Keep, just be mindful. We're, we're nearly the end of season one. So just make sure you keep on listening to all of these episodes. We always suggest you really listen to this episode because there's always, always golds of information. Just it's packed, packed with information. And uh, I myself, when I go back and listen to them, I always, I always find something I missed. That I always take a note on and I walk away with some new information. So we always encourage you to listen. But again, everyone, thank you for joining us. Keep on staying opportunistic, stay optimistic and uh, stay healthy above all else. We'll see you on the other side. Bye everyone.